One, two, three, go. Take off. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. All right, so I'm not sure how much time I got left, but hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, my name is Big Ball Vlogs. I do reviews, news, everyday vlogging, and every once in a while, I'll do a tutorial. So today, we're gonna to be doing a tutorial. Um, I wanna tell you guys, especially the new pilots out there, how you can pull off some very smooth, cinematic drone footage in like six or seven very easy steps. I mean, you don't have to be a pro pilot to pull any of these off. All you have to do is, no, I don't know why that's beeping. It's like 90, it's like 41 feet up. I don't know why it's beeping. Um, all you have to do is know how to pilot an aircraft. What am I getting here? I'm getting alarms for no reason. Oh, it's over top of the it's over top of the shed, and it's it's 40 foot up. It's over top of the shed, and it's giving me alarms. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to pull off some smooth cinematic drone footage in like six or seven steps. All you have to do is know how to pilot a drone forward, backward, left, right, and understand how to pilot, to pivot the camera. But I'm going to give you a couple quick tips to kind of get set up and get started. If this thing will stop beeping, let's get this done because I literally got like 27% on this battery. And I don't know, I got uh, 17 minutes left on this battery. So I'm going to try to get done in eight minutes. So here we go. So step number one, if you bought the fly more combo, I'm going to have to yell over this thing now. If you, let's take it up a little bit higher because that's going to be annoying. All right. It must still be something going on with that bottom sensor. So if you want the fly more combo, you probably got your set of ND filters. I've looked online, I cannot find any aftermarket ND filters. So step one, if you have a set, use them. And that is use your ND filters. Your ND filters are essentially a set of sunglasses for your drone, which are gonna allow that shutter to run a little bit slower, put on a lot more detail, which is gonna allow you to do a lot more after production, you know, editing, to kind of pull out the details, pull out the contrast, the sharpness, and everything else. So the ND filters in the fly more combo come in a 16, a 64, and a 256. You want to use a 16 like sometime in the morning towards sunset later in the day earlier in the day you want to use the 64 midday and if it's a bright sunny day like in the middle of winter where everything's super bright throwing that 256 i never use a 256 because i technically could call it a welding shield it's just too dark for me change the color profile and everything so step one use the nd filter step number two is to get your exposure correct so if you're looking at my screen recording right now the sky is at mid frame what we want to do is we want to keep the sky in the upper third of the frame. You can turn on the grid on your settings so that you have this some way to tell where the sky is. And as you can see, as I pull that sky into the upper third of the frame, the ground starts to light up and lighten up. So depending on what you want to shoot, if it's some scenery, if it's some landscape, and you want that ground, the houses and everything in, in, the, in the frame to be lit up, definitely put that camera down on like a 45 degree angle. Keep the sky in the upper third of the frame and you should get a proper exposure. Now, once you have the proper exposure where the ground is well lit up, on the bottom right side of the screen, you have this thing as an AE, that's called an exposure lock. You can touch that exposure lock and it'll lock it in place. For some reason, it's not responding to my thumbs touches here, but it'll lock it in place so that the exposure does not change. If clouds fly over, if you happen to move the camera, it'll keep the ground lit up and everything should be good as long as you're keeping that same angle. You should be okay for these five or six simple maneuvers. So first, use your ND filter. Next, use your exposure lock. Now, if you can pilot this drone forward, backwards, left, right, you can pull off some very smooth cinematic footage. And what we're gonna do is try to optimize the amount of time we use the drone's um, memory cards by shooting five to 10 second clips, right? Because I know a lot of new pilots are up, they're trying to get that photo, they're trying to find a point of interest, they're just flying around with the camera on, they're shooting 4K at one gigabyte per minute, and then before you know it, your memory card is filled up. In fact, that drone doesn't even have a memory card in it right now, I got eight gigabytes. So that technically means I can shoot probably like eight or nine one minute video video files. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna optimize on that. We're gonna optimize the amount of time that we use to five to 10 seconds. Think about it. If I'm watching your video and you're flying into the distance for 10 seconds, unless I'm like watching you fly over a lake, I'm going one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. By the time I get to 10, it feels like 10 minutes have gone by. So we're gonna keep that down to five seconds, right? So get up, find your point of interest, fly for five seconds, turn off the camera, turn on the camera, five seconds, maybe 10 seconds if you wanna make sure you got it right, turn off the camera. So now that we got that right, first we got the ND filter, we got the exposure, we're gonna film for five to 10 seconds. Now all you have to do is be able to fly the drone forward, back, left, right, and pull up some very smooth, simple techniques. So I'm gonna walk through these techniques one by one. 
the first technique, and I'm going to find a point of interest, which is the housing developer behind me. It's called the approach, and that is simply flying forward for 10 seconds. So, no, let's keep it. I'm going to keep it short. Let's fly forward for five seconds, and we're going to fly slowly or fast, however you choose to fly, depending on whether or not you're going to fly over your point of interest or not. But we're going to fly forward for five seconds. We're going to hit the record button. Camera's recording, and here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Stop it. Technically, I had eight seconds, so I'm gonna have about a second that I'm gonna have to edit off the front and back because the drone wasn't actually moving, and we wanna get this smooth cinematics, right? So we wanna see some dynamic movement and, and the drone flying as we do the editing. Maneuver number two, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull off what I call the retreat. I'm just gonna pull straight back on the stick so that I can kinda of get a reveal as I'm coming back. So I'm pulling back, and I'm gonna kinda of reveal what's kinda of going on behind me. So let's start the camera, and we're gonna pull back five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. You can pull that off if you're trying to get like some scenery in the back and you kind of want to fly away from it. Next maneuver, it's called the slide, very simple. All you have to do is push left or right on the stick. I usually do one of each. I'll point one direction, find a point of interest. Usually I'll fly a, a slide when I'm parallel to something. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn around. I'm gonna find the road in the background here. I'm gonna take it up just a little bit and this is how you perform a slide. You just find your point of interest, which is usually something parallel you want to fly with. You're going to hit the record button. You're going to slide left or right for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five, and stop. Turn the camera around, find a different point of interest. Let's say we want to do, let's go all the way around this time. Let's do the development. Same thing. Flying different direction this time. We're going to fly left, hit the camera, push left. One, one-handed flying here. Two, three, four, five. Stop the camera. Last maneuver, it's called cameras down. Cameras down, you're gonna do something like, you see that pool out there in the background? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna point this camera straight down like this. And cameras down usually just fly straight forward and straight back, depending on whichever way, whatever you wanna pull into the frame, doesn't matter, your choice. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna pan the camera up real quick so I can get over there to that point of interest, which is gonna be the swimming pool. We're going to find a swimming pool, and as you can see, I keep it centered in the grid here. All right. Now that I know I'm over top of the pool, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go cameras down. All right. I'm going to get the pool out of the frame. That's where cameras down starts with the subject out of the frame. Hit the record button and fly forward for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. And in certain situations, you might want to even let it go out of the frame. All right, so last maneuver, forgot to do the reveal. The reveal is, again, a very simple maneuver that only requires you technically to pan the camera up or down, right? So we're actually going to pan it up, not up or down. But you're going to start with it down on maybe a 45-degree angle. And let's say there's a beautiful sunset in the distance there. All you got to do is simply, you can either fly forward, fly backward, or stand totally still. But what we want to do is gently roll that camera up to reveal your subject in the distance, which could be a sunset, could be a mountain, could be a lake, right? So that's how you're going to pull it off. Practice the speed of the, the motion of the gimbal. You don't want those quick jerky movements of the gimbal. So we're gonna put it down on a 45 degree angle. We're gonna hit the record button and we're gonna pan up for five seconds. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Stop. All right, now Nat, are all, those are all the maneuvers that you need to know how to do to pull off some very smooth cinematic footage. Let me just show you how to pull all that together really quickly without having to do a lot of editing. So the reason that we're going to shorten those videos down to 5 or 10 seconds is because we don't want to have to go into like an editing software and take a 30 minute 4K file and then find 5 or 6 seconds worth of video. It will take you forever to make a 1 minute video. It will take you 3 hours to make a 1 minute video. So now we have these 5 or 6 different scenes that we've only shot 5 seconds with. We're going to go back out. And I'm going to use the pro mode because I find that the pro mode allows me to kind of like center it up, get all the video footage the way that I want it, shorten off those two seconds on the front and end that kind of the drone wasn't moving, and then we'll stitch it all together. So we're going to go back into the album. And what I have here, I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six different files in cache. And what I want to do is I want to select those different files. I got to get my screen recorder button out of the way before I shut off the screen recorder. So we're going to tick the check button in the top right corner. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five. And then six and how oh, else to download it sorry I, I clicked the wrong thing so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into oh sorry gotta go back into the album gotta go into create first go into create first 
you can pick a template which will kind of you know create this you know this movie for you but again it won't allow you to kind of like pick the exact scene that you want to use if you do have longer files so we're going to go into pro and we're going to select those same six files so we're going to one two three four five six we're going to add it's going to open up the pro video and what you can do is you can go in and kind of adjust the color profiles i, I explained that in my previous video if you want i'll leave a card up here so you can go back and take a look at it but let's say i wanted to kind of adjust this first this first in, uh clip here i can go into tone and i can click on the contrast and kind of like bump that up a little bit um i could also change the temperature if i wanted to to give you some different color profiles there we're gonna just leave it as for right now just to keep this video short <laughs> i don't think it's that short but we're gonna see if i can get it set 12 minutes right now we're gonna go back and just working with the files that we have i'm going to scroll across real quick to kind of show you what we have and those are the five or six different maneuvers so you got the you got the uh, the the retreat you got the approach you got the slide you got the other slide you got the cameras down and then you got the reveal so without rearranging them in the order that i want which you can do you can also add transitions in so we're going to put you know like a uh, dissolve in between and hit apply to all so we hit apply so now you got to dissolve in between each one. And now what we want to do is we want to go in and shorten these videos so that we have pretty much the camera moving. You want to have dynamic movement. You don't want to have that camera sitting still. And then you don't want the video to kind of like see you launching into the maneuver. You want the maneuver to be happening as the transition happens. So I'm going to just scroll through with my thumb real quick. First one looks good. Second one looks pretty good. Actually, I got a little bit of um, stoppage there at the end. So I'm going to tap on that file. And I'm going to shorten that until the camera stops. I mean, until the camp, so the camera doesn't stop. Okay, that one looks good. Good transition. That one looks good. So on this one, as you can see, the camera's still standing still in the very beginning. I'm going to tap on that file again. I'm going to slide it in just a second or two. I'm going to slide it in. Looks good. Transition out. That one's got a very short start off, but that one looks good. And then the last one, again, the camera stopped for just a second. I'm going to tap on it. I'm going to shorten that up just a little bit just to get that first second out of there. And now I'm going to scroll all the way back to the beginning, and I'm going to put this all together, just hit play, and this is what it looks like. So first you got your reveal. Just standing still. You got your cameras down. I didn't shorten it long, short enough, but you got your cameras down. It's going to transition to the next one. You've got your slide. Again, I didn't shorten it enough. You had that little stop there in a minute for about a half a second. You got your other slide, picking a different point of interest. You've got your retreat. Again, I should have shortened just a little bit more. Probably had a half a second on there I could have taken off. And then you got your approach. And that came in at 40 seconds. And it took me about what? As long to edit it down to what I wanted it to be. You hit save or in the top uh, right corner. It's actually an a, a export button. You hit continue. You can export at 1080, 720. Normally, first for Instagram, I upload. I mean, I, I export it at 720 because it exports faster, ups a little easier through you know your data connection for your phone. After what do we got here? We got 68, 70, 79. Boom, video was done. Hit play, and you automatically have you know your links to your social media websites that you can post this directly to. So hopefully this didn't take too long. I'm at 15 minutes. But again, this is, you know, just my tips on how to get that smooth cinematic drone footage, even if you're a new pilot and even if you're an experienced pilot it may work for you. So, hey, thanks for watching the channel. I'll get back to you later. Peace.